G'day Art Snackers, my name is James of James Luke Burke Creative and welcome to another month of Art Snacks Box Freestyle, where we take the supplies from the February 2021 Art Snacks Plus box, experiment with them to within an inch of their lives and create an absolute masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. In the interest of getting to know each other and more fun facts we can share with the community, today's fun fact is I have not had a haircut since I started filming Box Freestyle, so this now becomes a month by month check on how awkwardly long my hair can grow without me doing anything to it. So uh, keep keep updated every month and we'll see how long this can go for. It's already at a really awkward length where this is the only style that works, the hat over the hair. Anyway, let's get into the box and see what we're gonna do today. Alrighty, here is the February 2021 Art Snacks Plus box. Here's everything inside. Let's unwrap that little green burrito, see what we're gonna be playing with today. We have the Van Gogh Drawing and Sketch Spiral Bound Paper pad, 5.8 inches by 8.3 inches. That's in the plus box. And also in the plus box, we had the tin of six Derwent graphic pencils. We're also gonna be taking a closer look at the Higgins acrylic ink. We have a bottle of that there. I got the red light color. I love red. Uh, we have the Kuretake Zig metallic clean color dot, double-ended marker, and my color was violet. Also the Caran d'Ache graph stone pencil. I got 3B and the Princeton Velvet Touch Series 3950 synthetic brush, this size four round. A Koinor thermoplastic eraser and an art snack sticker. Let's move all of that out of the way and set it up for some experimentation and swatching. As we do each month on Box Freestyle, I like to take the supplies fresh out of their packaging and just go to town swatching them and experimenting with them. I'm pretty lucky that the Plus Box also includes the substrate we're going to work on, so that way all of the testing and experimentation I do, I know will work on my final piece because I'm not changing the papers. That's just one thing to note, and I think we mentioned it last month as well, that when you change papers, you can often change the results. It's not a bad thing, you might actually find that some of your supplies work better on a different paper, even sometimes colours, uh, the sizing in the paper can alter the different tones of certain colours, so you might actually like one of your favourite pink uh, even more on a different page, <laughs> a different paper. Um, but with Box Freestyle, this is great because our challenge, we want to use all of the supplies with all of the different findings that we do in this experimentation process to make a finished piece. And it is good to know that whatever I test on this page, I'll be able to replicate again on the next one. So I'm just putting everything on the page. Like I said, first up, how it was designed to be used. So uh, when I do the pencils, I just do a bit of quick shading light pressure, heavy pressure, seeing the different tonal values. And then I look to the secondary uses, you know, so instead of using the pencil and getting all those graphite, you know, pencil textures, I grab my finger, nature's tool, and I just smudge it into the page so that I can see what it looks like all blended out and soft. And then I use the eraser as a third way to uh, achieve a different effect. With lots of water-based mediums, I tend to grab this little plastic palette, swatch it in there, or just uh, put a few drops in there and activate it with water. That's so I can make a little paint, a little watercolor, a little, uh, I guess, acrylic ink as well, and little mixes of uh, things that I can paint around the page. This is also really great if I have a few different colors because then I can mix secondary and tertiary colors. And that way, even though I have only a few colors in the box, I actually have a bunch of different colors I can use in my final piece. I didn't mix it with this grey because <laughs> once I had made my little water mix of graphite, it did come out interesting. It was a pretty gritty grey, like granular texture. It almost looked like concrete, so I guess if I was drawing lots of concrete in my piece, uh, it would have been effective. Um, but I could have mixed the purple and the red with that as well. As it were, I just really loved the, the red and the purple mixed together, made this really beautiful red purple. And so I was happy with those to be my three colors. That mixed in with all the different tones of gray, we have a lot of options to play with as far as our rendering of our final piece goes. So this is the experimentation process. I don't know if you've uh, built this into your Art Snacks Plus box freestyle uh, breakdown routine, <laughs> but if you haven't, 
please let me encourage you again just to give it a go once because it is really fun to look for all these uh, different ways that you can use the supplies. It really opens your mind up to just what you're able to achieve and I think it does bring an extra level of confidence when you're going into creating not only in the art snacks challenge but also when you're using your supplies uh, you know just doing your own personal work I have noticed that over time the more I got experimental with my supplies the less I needed at the table to have a good time I used to bring everything out I would line up all my pencils I would line up all my markers you know I would think I need an extra bigger table because I can't line up all my paints at the same time I thought I need everything here but I will say that, I mean, even doing all these box freestyle videos, I, I tend to bring less to the table and I actually tend to uh, randomize a little bit more. So I'll grab maybe three or four different colors and I'll just pick them at random and I'll just work with that. So I think it's kind of opened my mind a little bit more and I'd be curious to know if working with this process has uh, has broadened your horizons a little bit as well because I think it's been um, yeah I think it's been pretty valuable for me. Here's one of the little experimentations I just it was a what if I do this moment and I was actually quite impressed. <laughs> um, I like to call this pencil dipped in acrylic ink question <laughs> mark. Look. There's a lot of things we can try. It's never crossed my mind to do this before, but I thought, you know what? I dipped everything else in the ink. Let's just do this. I was almost gonna put my finger in there and just start doing finger painting, but you know, that's been done. <laughs> so um, the double pencil there, but yeah, one of my finds today was dipping my pen pencil in acrylic ink. All I did was dip just the tip in it. I mean, you can get the wood dipped in there as well. It's fine. You can shave it off once you're finished, uh, but because the tip, uh, if you get it in the wood, the wood will start soaking up some of that acrylic ink, but if you just dip the tip in the ink and then start working with it, it will start to blend away. It's almost like if you've seen those marker videos where people touch the tips of the markers and it transfers the ink and then as they use the marker it starts to blend out. It's that, but it's the pencil and acrylic ink version of it. So very, very interesting. I did like it. Um, I thought it was an interesting and unique look that I don't think I would have been able to replicate very easily and I think that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those little experiments that you know is this easy to replicate like could you do this with another couple of mediums or how easy would it be you know if I drew out the picture first and then tried to trace around it with you know my paintbrush and just put the ink on little parts of the line and I just don't think I could replicate it it was one of those things where if I want that look I have to dip my pencil into acrylic ink <laughs> and, uh, and I definitely used it in my finished piece as well so here is all the experimentation I'm going to crack out my little sketchbook and we're going to thumbnail a few ideas for our finished piece. Okay, fresh page, we're going to do a few thumbnails and then get cracking on the finished piece. I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play today of the supplies that I'm using and what I'm drawing. It was very intuitive. Uh, this is the thumbnail for it here, this landscape orientation. I wanted to do a bit of an intuitive process today where I was kind of drawing whatever was at the front of my mind and I was moving left to right and then up and down just all over the page, just kind of filling the page with doodles. Uh, lots of character drawings today, so maybe that's what was on my mind. <laughs> I'm really not quite sure where it all came from. I think a lot of the heart motif has to do with the fact that it is February and Valentine's Day is uh, fast approaching, if not already here. I'm not quite sure what day you'll be watching this video. If it's already here, I hope you did what you had to do. Um, but anyway, this is the piece, and I first started with a pencil, just the most basic of supplies, a pencil, Supply as old as time itself, um, just a nice little pencil sketch in the corner. I moved on to the graph stone pencil as well. I really, really like this. It's such a deep, rich lead. Um, the 3B is so soft and I, I really like the smudging as well. I'd be curious to get some tortillons onto that and uh, really see how far I can push all that graphite. I guess I started a lot with the graphite pencils just to sketch out some of the different characters and forms. I didn't want to finish one and then move on to the next one, so you'll see that I actually bounce around the page a lot. And this is very typical of my process, especially working with mixed media. You get into the habit of bouncing around a page because whilst one thing 
everything is drying, uh, you can be working on something else. So typically I bounce around the page a lot. I'm just drawing a lot of character faces. Apparently they have lots of different character ears, lots of animal ears. <laughs> I really don't know how this happened today. I, maybe the woodland creature vibe on the washi tape was what was inspiring some of it. But yeah, kind of a random thing I didn't realize was kind of sitting in my subconscious this afternoon. So I'm gonna sketch out a few of these and I'll be back in a second with some more supply talk. You'll get tired of my voice. That's how much I'm gonna tell you that I'm missed. Here is my acrylic dipped pencil, one of our little discoveries from our experimentation today. I, um, I'm still loving it, I just think it's such an interesting little technique. Uh, you really want to only dip the tip of that pencil in, I know I said this before but I can't stress it enough because you can really tell that it just becomes a pencil if a lot of the ink soaks up into the wood. Um, and I'll also just ease your mind there and let you know that you can sharpen off any of the stained wood and it also doesn't affect the pencil uh, putting that acrylic on the tip. It will come off, you can sharpen it off or you can just draw it off uh, as you do when you're drawing your picture. I'm also using a dip pen with that really watered down acrylic ink. I am technically cheating because that dip pen wasn't in the box, but I won't tell if you are. <laughs> This is the one millimeter end of the dot marker and again I have the violet and it's metallic and this is water based ink so you can actually smudge some of that ink around with water. I just wanted to draw with it first before I did any shading and I don't believe I actually did any shading on this one. I really like the stark contrast between the white of the paper and that violet uh, marker. I should just say this. I love the dot markers. I haven't used any of the metallic ones. I do have a bit of a collection of the regular colors, um, some of the lighter ones as well. In journaling, I use them so often because I love to fill a lot of negative space and you'll see that in this piece here. I fill pretty much every inch of the page with a little drawing or something and you'll see right at the end why I love the dot markers so much, but they fill every space. Just polka dots everywhere, dots, dots, dots. Cruella, one of my favorite villains. I love the dots. <laughs> anyway, move on. Uh, I'm using some of that acrylic ink watered down as a bit of a light watercolor wash. And whilst the page is damp, just kind of blotting in some of those extra, uh, just some extra saturation to kind of feather out into the page. Here's some more pencil sketching. I think at this point we've kind of used everything uh, as far as the supplies go. I do believe I track my pencil across the page at one point and then have to erase it. There you go, you can just see it popped up in the middle there. So we even got a chance to use the eraser. I call that a very successful, if not slightly cheated, Art Snacks challenge. Here's some more of that ink dipped pencil. <laughs> Am I crazy for thinking that this is this is really fun? I mean, I know it's just ridiculous, but I'm just, I was really into it. I'm definitely going to give it another go. I, well, the only thing is I don't really have any other acrylic inks, so I might have to see if I can do this with maybe some watered down gouache or, I don't know, I'll figure out a way. But there's a will, there's a way, and I have a will, a strong will, a strong desire <laughs> to uh, try that again with some different colors. Here is the dot marker, but this is the dot end. And like I said, just love the dots. If it's not completely obvious, the way to get those dots is to, uh, to get them different sizes to vary up the pressure. I know it says it on the little postcard, like little insert for the box, but just in case you've thrown that away, uh, just vary up the pressure. You can get a really tiny dot on that big uh, dot end, just as long as your pressure is very, very light. Here I am wasting a lot of ink by using the dropper, the little eyedropper as the the medium to sketch with. I shouldn't say wasting because I don't mind doing that, but I know a lot of people uh, really fear doing things like that because it seems like a waste, so <laughs> I guess I'm speaking right to you. Um, but it, look, you're used more than you would definitely uh, use if you're using a paintbrush. I just, sometimes I just like to try it. You know what I mean? It's there. It's just another way to put the medium onto the page, and this is what all of this box freestyle is about, is being experimental. So. 
I guess you can look at it. If you like the result, you can try it. And if you don't, then I've sacrificed all of that ink for you. <laughs> uh, but one of the things it did teach me was the ink itself is uh, very reactive in when it's very thick like it takes a long long time to dry and I believe that a lot of the ink will sit into the substrate like the, the first layers of it will sink into the paper and then you're kind of creating on top of it more like if it's so super thick it's almost like it's its own resist and so the top layer of that uh, can still be re-wet so I, I don't know if you really have to just let it dry for a ton of time but I did accidentally activate some of that ink uh, and then on purpose activate some of that ink sometimes because it stayed wet for a long long time so just know that about the acrylic ink the heavier the application the longer you're gonna have to let it dry but I think it's um it's pretty saturated like it's a pretty vibrant pigmented ink so you actually the watered down version of it even the very watered down version of it is still quite vibrant I really don't think you have to use it full strength I would probably recommend using it a little watered down just to save yourself but there is a ton in the bottle so i don't know that's uh, i guess that's personal preference and here i am doing one of my other favorite things which is to saturate the page with fresh water and then drop in a lot of the uh, water activated mediums especially with the dots it's really fun with the dots i've done this before with the marker but this is a specific dot marker <laughs> so you actually get a bit more payoff uh, before i think we did it with the snow and then going back in, working around the page, um, just moving about, whichever part is dry, I'll go and work over there and then accidentally smudge my hand in something and have to cover it up. Uh, using a lot of the acrylic ink for layering as well because it's transparent when it's watered down and so you can, um, you can actually glaze over the top of it. And it is waterproof once dry, so this makes it a really perfect glazing medium to be able to work in lots of transparent layers, get a lot of those tone on tone techniques that it look really effective, uh, but filling a lot of that extra space. Lots of leaves, I draw lots of leaves. It's such a very calming process for me to draw leaves. If I'm drawing a lot of leaves, chances are my brain is completely turned off and I'm very relaxed. <laughs> and this is the final part Probably my favorite part where I just go through everything with the dot marker and just put dots everywhere. I just love the dot marker. I was actually really sad because I said I had the other part of like I had all my dot markers sitting next to me and I felt like I just wanted to use all of them, all the colors in every nook and cranny over the page. It's a great way to fill negative space, which brings me to probably my last tip before I join you for the outro. Um, filling negative space is a very simple and effective trick to making your pages of sketches and experimentation look like finished pieces. I know sometimes we're always chasing that elusive finished quote unquote look. Um, and so filling your negative space with little doodles and little, uh, little motifs, even little dots everywhere is a great way to make it look finished, even if you've got lots of negative space just sitting there blank. So I hope you enjoyed that piece coming together. I will again join you for the outro and I hope you, uh, I hope you took something away from that. I know we talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> if anything, go grab your pencil, dip it in the acrylic ink and just tell me what you think. <laughs> I'll see you in a second. There we go. That is February's box freestyle. I hope you enjoyed watching that come together. If you want to subscribe to Art Snacks, you can use the code James10 at checkout for 10% off. And also, don't forget to share your creations for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge in the mix and on social media. I hope to see you again next month. Until then, bye.